So you published before approval, yes or no? We published limits, not the, regula regulations. Not the regulations. Which are, part, which are part of the regulations? The Act presupposes that there are certain provisions within the Act that can be implemented without regulations. Yes, the IBC is required to gazette even these spending limits. But 29, section 29 is a clincher because it provides the Commission may make regulations for the better performance of its functions under this Act. And such regulations shall be laid before the National Assembly for approval before they are published in the Gazette. Before they are published in the Gazette. All right, and of course uh, that is the uh, National Assembly Speaker Justin Moturi speaking after uh, different other officials from IBC as well as the committee. And Horbu Mokomore, you wanted to respond, and I want you as you do so to also tell us about um, now that those limits have been uh, gazetted, there's the standoff on regulations, uh, how do you see the implementability of this in the 2022 general election? How do we do that, without regulations, possible. if they are not enacted? No, I think when you... Well, if, if you follow the law, the law itself must be enforceable. That is the first point. You cannot have a law whose only way of uh, observing it is in breach, for example. When they are asking you for spending limit, you've seen all this debate by the civil society, by the lawyers, by mostly the non-politicians, okay. thinking that they want to throw something which the politicians can obey and implement. They don't even want to touch on the real problem in this country. Mm. When they ask you about spending limits, spending on what? If you go to the US where I'm saying they have done the copy paste, yes. you just go and announce your candidature and you just go on TV ads and the publicity materials until the election day. In Kenya, nobody wants to regulate on what you are spending on. Mm. For example, you have a lot of constituents, you know, the, the schools opened in the last three weeks. And when they open, they are, the bursaries from, from CDF, for example, they have not come. Mm -hmm. So you will find like an average of nearly that appearance calling and saying they need 3,000 or 4,000. And most of them are even in this school, which, which don't even require fees. Mm -hmm. It's money 3,000 for lunch. Kumekauka. Tafadhali nitumia kitu kidogo. Mudu wamekupia directly. Somebody has called you direct. Mm -hmm. Not that they have gone to the office. Mm -hmm. So that one is a direct response. So you give the 3,000, mm -hmm. you give to this one, you may not give to the other one. If you were to do the spending limits, mm -hmm. we should also combine the story of the aspirants mm -hmm. and the candidates. Uh, and, and, and the, candidates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the regulations must be m on both. Mm -hmm. Because if it is 12 months to the election, mm -hmm. you will find a lot of clowns who have stolen money from uh, parastatos and uh, from other government agencies mm -hmm. coming with money over the weekend mm -hmm. and they just want to go sp spending it by giving people. Mm -hmm. so when you give people money directly, you are conferring personal benefit to a political cause, and that's bribery. Mm. Nobody in, the, in that debate or in that law wants to, to limit on this public access of individuals or of, uh, voters looking for money from candidates. I can, I can tell you when we were running in the 90s, as, I, as I'm telling you, it never used to be expensive. Because people would come with ideas, mm. you talk to people, you know their problems. Mm. And they understand that you are, you are a leader who can follow their problems. Let, let, let me finish. Uh -huh. the, you are a leader who can handle their problems. Mm. Then they elect you. Today, because of this nonsense about um, stealing money from CDF, a lot of leaders have come with calculators. Nikienda, Nikiba, 50 percent of this money, mm -hmm. I am okay. So they don't care about how much they are spending. Mm -hmm. So we need also to include what are you spending on. Oh. Not, not, not this just copy-pasting things and asking people to implement that you have a spending limit of 4 billion. 4 billion, what are you buying? Okay, <laughs> uh, because you, you've raised the question, let's see, let's see what the law says about <laughs> what you're asking. You're know, talking about um, some of what has been published by IABC to be the limits. In Kiamba constituency that just had a by-election recently, um, you can see the population as well as the geographical area that is to be covered, and the limit is 17 million shillings. Bonchari mm. constituency is 13.2 million shillings. Jija constituency, 19.8 million shillings. The Goretti North is uh, 16.8 million shillings. Madare, 15.6 million shillings. Madare is just about two square kilometers. Where is mine? Uh, but a lot of uh, mm. people there in terms of population. <laughs> For the wards, just uh, to reflect on what's going on, Mugunga Ward had a by-election recently. 
they are not supposed to spend more than 3.4 million shillings. This mm -hmm. is in 60 days uh, of campaigns. Loria Ward in Yandaro County, 3.3 million. London million Ward in Akuru, 3 million shillings. Huruma Ward in Madara constituency, one of the smallest, is just about 3.3 million shillings. Then Machakos County, this is county elections, whether it's Senate, uh, Governorship or Women Representative. Machakos with its 1.4 million people, um, 52.7 million is the cup for Migori County, where uh, Dr. Pamela Diambo comes from, is 40.5 million shillings. For Garissa, with its vastness, we are talking about 88.7 million shillings. Moranga County, 39 million shillings. Mombasa, 39.6 million shillings for a county election. Um, then these are notable elections in Nairobi, you can imagine, it, it's more than 4.4 million uh, people, 170 million shillings is the cup, Trukana 123 million, Lamo just 21.9 million sh shillings, Kisumu 40.8 million shillings, Kakamega 59.7 million shillings. So, presidential election, this is uh, the most expensive election, 4.4 billion shillings is the, is the uh, maximum, I don't know whether uh, we have this kind of money. Marco Mori will be telling us how much they spent, <laughs> as well as mm. Dr. Pamela Odiambo in 2017. Um, so an individual contribution should not exceed 20% unless you are the candidate. That is 880 million shillings. And uh, these are the allowed cost items. You asked qu a question, Honorable Maure, about what the, the, your financing. Campaign venues, campaign publicity materials, campaign advertising, campaign personnel, campaign transport, campaign logistics. Those uh, resources you share with the electorate I don't believe they are part of that. Then, considerations as per the Act on how you arrived at the figure, <laughs> geographical features and urban centers, type of election, <laughs> the population, and communication infrastructure. Uh, well, and finally, um, there are certain questions that have been raised, how the limits were calculated, how IBC will monitor, what is the expenditure period, and the, uh, the official campaign season is two months, but as per the Act as it is now, it's not very clear um, that expenditure period and who will monitor the expenditure that is currently going on, <laughs> including some meetings that uh, your respective wow. parties have been holding. <laughs> um, but where do we begin? So, if you had to comment about those figures, you said that you don't think they are sufficient to run an election. But who is the problem here? Is it the politician bringing money to the electorate or the electorate demanding? Who made it? A question of money when you go to an election. First of all, it's uh, it's been very like uh, my brother Mushima Maoka did mention that in the 90s we didn't have this problem. It is because also the population has increased, and with the population increase, there has been largely unemployment in this country. Mm -hmm. That has immensely contributed into uh, our uh, campaigns, you know, becoming very expensive. You have a population out there. Who believes that uh, a member of parliament should always uh, have money and, and, and should always be able to give? And that is why, rightfully so, I must say the regulations uh, uh, capping of of uh, spending mm -hmm. is extremely, extremely important. Not even let me even not speak about uh, mm -hmm. uh, constituencies first, but national, mm -hmm. because we are making politics in this country very commercial. Mm. Today, that I, if immediately I've given you what I've given you, that's it. Because ideally, what should happen is that we should have finances purposely for logistics, period. But now you see there are so many other, play, play, many other things that come into play that becomes very expensive for, 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 for running an election. You have to pay people, you have to buy your way out of border borders, you have to do I don't know what, which entirely becomes very, very expensive. We want everyone to compete, mm -hmm. and we want leaders to, we want a, a nation where we have leaders who are prudent. Mm -hmm. um, we will end up into a, in a situation where um, if we become so commercial, that the leaders that we elect today are simply the people who will come toward two months of election, mm. pay the entire mm. constituency and get elected. And you have very poor leaders who will not even come and, and legislate. Mm -hmm. And that is mm. something that we must run away from. Yeah. And I wish the people of this country could understand that people now should be sending their agenda and the, and on what they want to do for, if, if, if elected. Mm -hmm. We also want to have as many people on board as possible. Tell me today, if we say four billion, for instance, mm -hmm. Then how, when will a poor man be a president of this country? Mm. It, is, it becomes an elitist club that if you cannot raise, where do you even get four billion? Four billion is so much money to raise, and, and, and that is why... Would, <laughs> would you know how much the Jubilee 
presidential campaign spent in 2017. That is why I'm saying we want to run away from that. And, and part of the problem that we have now was because of Jubilee. They did not want this thing passed in, I can tell you that. They did not want this thing passed they in. They have no idea how much it was. It was way above 7 billion. Way above 7 Where billion. Where did that money come from? Friends, now who come back again in, in form of Kamsa? Tutu. Yeah, because that is, that I have to come and give you a tender. If you, yes, you participated sir. in financing my campaign, mm -hmm. then when I get to power, then you become the circle of friends now that I will keep. And people will want to be rewarded. Let me tell you, you must look at the, at the scenario now. You'll see so many uh, uh, business people mm -hmm. gravitating towards the, the top uh, presidential candidate, mm -hmm. purely because they want to make sure that they can finance the campaigns and eventually, immediately after, mm -hmm. they come up uh, with all these huge projects where they can uh, get back their finances. So I think that is very good and the problem, let, however, let, let is... Let me ask you, Honorable Koech, how much money did you spend in 2017 to run for Belgot parliamentary seat? I spent so much money. How much? Way above 30 million. Where did you get it from? Uh, okay. Now that is another thing. He has been in business. Accountability. <laughs> so, in fact, this regulation should actually say mm. you must now declare the source of yes, your yes, finances, yes, yes. Uh, of your of your campaign finances. That is very important, so that everyone is, is, is can be able to tabulate and say this is where I found this money. And yes, then, so. mm -hmm. mm. I, I have not even recovered that money. Mm. So what do I do? Do I go back and steal from, uh, mm. from, from CDF or what do I do? So those are some of the things that you must And, and how much do you plan to spend next election? Uh, next election because, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the incumbent. I've done, I've done remarkably well yeah, using my CDF. Yes, it should be very, yeah. it should not be very expensive. I, I will say I will probably use 10 million. Mm. And, and simply for logistics. Okay, I'm looking at the spending limits of IBC, and uh, Belgut has been assigned 13.9 million shillings, so that would be quite easy. That is the laziness of IBC. Can you imagine from 2016? <laughs> 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 Just hold on. When I calculate 13.9 million versus um, the, the I mean the population in your constituency, it comes to about 95 shillings per member, uh, per person in, yeah. that, in, the, in that constituency. Uh, for Igembe North, 16.6 .6 million shillings, and uh, you have a population of 169,000, so it comes to about 98 shillings per member uh, of that constituency. So I don't know how that translates to <laughs> Uyuhana school fees. Let's listen to a, to a clip by some politicians who spoke about this. You cannot uh, stop me from uh, oiling and funding my campaign. As you try to entice them and talk to them and sell to them policies, you must also tell them how are they going to live the next one day. Those people live at less than a dollar a day. You are faced with a situation uh, and you are feeling like helping, assisting, and you say, you start blaming uh, Chebukati. I will not help you pay your school fees. I will not give you uh, assistance or maybe food items because Chebukati has stopped me. In my 2017 bid for Kiharu, the big chunk of the money went into marketing. It, it incorporates media advertisement, it incorporates billboards, that is uh, posters. There are people who can do other kind of uh, marketing uh, materials like um, calendars. So most of the spending actually end up happening during the nominations, which IBC is not participating as much. It will be very difficult for anyone to be elected without a budget of from 15 million. There are some people who go up to upwards of 60 million Kenya shillings. For the incumbent, it is usually a bit fairer. <laughs> Nimpereke satellite, nimpereke gando, aweze kuelewa mambo ya ground. Ndiyo akiweza kuweka hizo sheria na regulation anaweka, awe anaweka hizo sheria kama ako, eh? and the actual picture uko kwa ground. So when you listen to the political leaders, then it appears quite impractical that you're going to really enforce spending limits because if you say that grounds between, qua ground between the different, how then do you implement a policy uh, or, a, or rather a guideline that says that in your county or that uh, requires you to spend 40.5 million shillings with the population that you have that should be 36 shil shillings uh, per member. I'm talking about a child who is one year or even less up to an elderly person. How, how, how then do you implement if this is the reception by the political class? Yes, uh, from a political perspective and the reality on the ground, these regulations or these limits, to be honest, they are very impractical. 
because like I said earlier now from the experience of uh, an incumbent it is like your daily life is full of spending and you know the whole idea here is you are a politician that's why you are spending you are a political leader and so we, we, we are looking at it and we want to echo uh, Maori's uh, sentiment mm -hmm. it is important that IBC should actually get in touch with the issues that make a political aspirant or a candidate or the one that is working spend what are we spending on and as we all allude the historical background of this heavy spending we have today is very sad because I think as a young girl I shared the sentiments I, I saw politicians uh, campaign they would just come even to the chambers where people are uh, uh, digging and mm -hmm. they, I saw my mother and my father they would just talk to them and they would just go away there was no real giving of any items at most it would be sometimes for the women the whole thing started like giving kiberiti or maybe a packet of salt which was then costing like 50 uh, cents and things like that but then in uh, at some stage of the mid 80s and then late uh, early 90s throughout the 90s then we saw the reward system of Kenya change drastically from appreciation and and applauding people for what good they have done and and going to money so that you would uh, remember those scenarios when president moi would be passing by the roadside then he's buying a tray of bananas from some woman mm -hmm. and he's giving 10 10 10000 shillings for that and and then people started singing and praising and in return they got the money and and they got promotions and and things like that i remember this very well and before anybody realized it so the com uh, commercialization of the politics came in and right now my friend however good the idea is mm -hmm. you have these people want you as a leader to solve their current you know problem which they want in liquid cash somebody comes to you my children slept hungry my my mother is dying in hospital I have this dead to bury and all these kind of things so what we are saying here the regulations are good the intention of this whole regulation or act or whatever we call it is very good but then the question would be what would IBC do to make the population understand that we are coming up with ideas as leaders that can carry us all along and we need to work at it for example when I want to transform the youth of Migori County how do I get to make the youth of Migori County realize that giving them, say, 10,000 mm -hmm. shillings today will be worse than giving them Hold an on. idea like, say, a greenhouse that they can use mm. to plant tomatoes to give them more money? Dr. Fami, so I think this is the, 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 the yes. Do you find 40.5 million shillings restrictive for you in the next year's campaign? In Migori County? I really have no idea because I'm telling you, even right now, if you gave me 40 million today and then trust me to spend it in Migori County on the Migorians for the next five days, it would be well spent and gone. Okay. And then. How much did you spend in 2017? Uh, I in remember covering your nomination. Experience. In 2017, uh -huh. again, was a very interesting experience for me uh -huh. because in 2017, to be honest, I had very little money. And much of the funding that I got were actually from myself. I was doing some research, I was doing some teaching part-time and all that. How much was it? I think by the end of the day, with the contribution from my family and a few friends, I think I spent around 25 million. Then 40.5 million would be more than enough. Mm. I thought so, but again, as we are saying, like now 2022, the scenario is, is, is changed. The, there are more people who are coming the reason I'm asking money this and all that. Question, Dr. Pamela Diambo, yes. because you tell me that you spent 25 million shillings. Yes. In your life as a parliamentarian, since you came into office in yes. August 2017, mm -hmm. every time you're home you have to spend money. A lot of it. Mm. So I'm just wondering, when do you make it and where? Yes. What, uh, what he said uh, it earlier, Christian. that the money that we spend like me, I honestly spend all the monies that I'm paid. When it is finished, my scenario in Migori is even different. Mm. When it is finished, I tell them it is finished. 
whether they accept it or they protest against it, that is the truth. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I wish, like he is crying, this is the way all political leaders should go, so that we are honest. We don't have to live in, in imaginations mm. and overstrain spending what we don't have. And that's why I'm telling you, when we are talking about the limits, like now for me, who wants to now run for the governorship? I've been spending all that as a women rep. So whatever I've done, whatever the work that I've delivered, you know all this is part of my campaign. It is service delivery as well as campaign. So by the end of the day, really, how much shall I have spent on Migari County to become a governor? It, is, it, it will be way beyond this 40 million. And how shall you recover it? Because no. it is ir irrecoverable. Yeah. According to me, it is irrecoverable. It is just service to the people of Kenya and people of Migori. I don't foresee myself recovering it any day. Service to the people. Mustala Mudavadi said something interesting. Let's listen to his perspective about the spending limit <sighs> by IEBC. Mm -hmm. That Gazette notice, it's like IEBC is telling Kenyans that if you don't have money, you cannot be uh, elected. This is wrong. We were never born with money. You make money when you are working, when you are doing business. But money should not be the determinant of the leadership of this country. Hatuwezi kusema pesa ndio itaamua nani atakuwa kiongozi hapana. Tukienda hivyo tutaharibu taifa letu. Wale wa mama ambao wanataka kujiingiza kwa siasa. Wale vijana wanataka kujiingiza kwa siasa. Utawambia wangoje mpaka wapate pesa kiasi hiyo? Haiweze kani. We must be able to build a nation with equity and opportunities for all. Not opportunities for the rich and nothing for those who are starting their lives. Tunataka kila mutu apewe na fasi. Okay, that is uh, Honorable Musala Mudavid. And of course, it appears we are all agreed that campaigns are expensive, but they're expensive because of our habits as a country. Um, no clear answer on who started it. Is it the electorate or the politicians? But I think you came so close to saying where it all began. But uh, um, Advocate Ogola, uh, so now we are where we are. Uh, the Committee on Delegated Legislation says that uh, we're out of time to come up with regulations. It appears that Parliament is in agreement, that is the National Assembly. Yet there's the desire uh, to limit how much money goes into an election. What do we do? I think, thank you, Sam. In terms of action points, uh, this is what I would suggest to propose, and most of it was already captured in the civil society joint statement on the campaign financing standoff. The first thing to do is to recognize that Kenyan's constitution requires what you may consider as an egalitarian approach to campaign spending as opposed to what happens in the U.S., which is a more a liber libertarian approach, where you spend freely without consequences. Here in Kenya, there is a, a legitimate public interest need mm -hmm. to regulate how much is spent because we are a poor country. And that legitimate public interest need has been reduced into a constitutional provision known as Article 88, sub Article 4, Paragraph 1. So number two, let us delink the campaign spending limits published by IBC from the general regulations. The two can be delinked, and let us delink them. Mm -hmm. Number three, let us recognize that IBC acted lawfully, both within the constitutional mandate and the statutory requirement in publishing the spending limits. Number four, let parliament support implementation of these spending limits. And number five, if parliament still feels that the, the spending limits can be varied downwards, let them suggest so, because I already said there's a provision in the law mm -hmm. that allows for review okay. of the spending limits. Number six, I think this one goes now to the general public. I feel, I feel the pain. In fact, I feel scared of ever running for politics because the core function of a leader, and Kenyans need to understand this, the core function of a leader is representation and legislation. This community service it's a new experience that is only unique in Africa and in poor countries. And it is making leadership expensive. We have to reduce the financial burden we impose on our leaders. It is creating a terrible compulsion for corruption. 
As incumbents, they have heard them say, and Honorable Kaichi, you've spoken eloquently. I think if there was someone who's fit for re-election, it is you. The honesty I've seen in your conversation, Dr. Pommel, is, is excellent. But look at the burden. We leave the voter out, and we need to continuously, between now and the next election, to sensitize the voter, to reduce this compuls compulsion for extraction of money from our leaders. Because if a leader has a salary, he's supposed to use that salary to organize his personal life. He's there to represent you. Where do you want him to get this money every day he goes to the constituents to give you? Ultimately, if he doesn't give you, you will not elect him. Ultimately, they say, if the hunters learn to shoot without, without missing, the bird will learn to fly without patching. MPs will look for money from whatever sources. So even as we MPs support implementation, I make an appeal mm -hmm. to the electorate. Can you please reduce the compulsion to extract money from our leaders? Otherwise, let us follow those action points. We must implement spending limits because the Constitution requires so. There is no justification for delaying the spending limits. We can't use the non-implementation non of the regulation. Okay. The spending limits are standalone uh, guidelines that can be implemented separately. Mm -hmm. Let us implement them. Okay. As all, all right. And